Hi, artist, and welcome to your um, video art class today. I'm really excited to be collecting things and making something with you that uses objects from the natural world. So I wanted to show you a picture um, created by an artist. Her name is uh, Justina Blakeney, and she's a modern artist. She's living today. And she came up with a challenge, which is called Face the Foilage. And foilage is a big word for all of the greenery and all of the plants and the leaves that are seen in the environment around us. So who can name something that they see outdoors when they go on a nature walk? That's right. If you said plants, leaves, trees, flowers, even tiny little pebbles, um, those are different things that you might collect for this project. But foliage means greenery. So what you're going to see on my table in just a moment are some of the different objects that I've been collecting from the walks in my neighborhood. And we're going to use all of those interesting shapes and interesting objects to create something that looks like a person's face. So in order to create a face, what kind of things do you think we're going to need? Like, what are the different things that you see on my face? So if you said like eyes, a nose, mouth, hair, ears, those are all things that you might use when creating a portrait. Can everybody say portrait? So this project uses objects from nature to create a beautiful portrait. Now, if you think that you might like to save your portrait, you're gonna need either a canvas panel or a big piece of watercolor paper to save it on. If you don't have those things, even a piece of cardboard from like recycled from maybe a cereal box or something like that would definitely work. Especially the cereal box might work well if you want to create like a skin tone for your portrait. So that's something to think about. So we're going to look for objects in the natural world. Now, something like a leaf in art, we have a word for that, and that word is organic shape. So organic shapes are shapes that come from nature. If you already knew that, then you remember that organic shapes are bumpy shapes that are found in nature. So a leaf, this is from a geranium. So if you find a geranium leaf, you can smell it, it smells uh, kind of, it has a really specific smell. This is bark from a tree, so tree bark. I encourage you when you are collecting to collect some really colorful things to make your portrait fun and to make it unique. So now I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna show you everything that I've collected on my nature walks this week. Okay. All right. So now you see all of the cool things that I collected. I found some long objects that had fallen from a tree. And remember, unless you're in your own yard, you really don't want to take anything unless it's fallen onto the ground. Um, so some of, our, some of these are from my yard, but then some, I found things that, like, you can tell this one is a little bit older because it's starting to come brown. So I have a tray here filled with long shapes. Um, long lines or wavy lines. So if you can think of what might actually um, create like wavy lines or long lines that could then be used in your portrait. So you've got a tray full of long shapes and then I have a tray full of more like round shapes and oval shapes. And I'm gonna be building these and adding them together when I create my portrait. So the first thing I like to do is I like to lay things out and I like to just imagine, and you can even kind of break things, which is fun. Imagine what might look good for eyes, right? So I found some kind of round shapes for the eyes. The next thing, also like the acorns work really well, 
This would be kind of cool, eyebrows. So just play with it and have fun and think about where you want things to go. The first thing I like to do is picture it. So this is inspired. That would be like a really big mouth. I'm not sure if I want really, really big lips or if I want kind of a, a more of a simple, small mouth on my portrait. Which one do you guys like better? Do you guys like the small mouth or the really big mouth? You can always tear that to make it a little bit smaller, but I think for now, I might capture that expression of somebody having like a really small, um, a really small mouth. Let's see. Okay. The next thing that we're gonna look at is maybe something that could make a nose. Ooh, kind of a long shape. I know noses are kind of long, organic shapes, right? They can be kind of long and kind of bumpy. Now, um, I also have some long leaves here. And it's fun. These are from a eucalyptus tree that has really long leaves. It's fun to kind of see. You could actually create a bunch of these and then keep, mm -mm, keep the one that you like the best. Right? If you want to preserve it, I'm going to recommend um, a gel glue at the very end to preserve it. And you can ask an adult to help you, um, or you might be able to do it to paint on the Mod Podge at the very end if you want to keep your work. Definitely when you're on your walk, look for little round shapes because those will make good pupils or irises, which is like the very, very center of our eye. So see what you can find if you want to have a pupil or a little dot, like little pebbles. That's what I was thinking of when I said pebbles. A little pebble might be nice for that too. Once you kind of start to get an idea of how the face will be, that's when I like to start gluing things down. So again, I'm using my tacky glue, but plain white glue would work as well. For younger artists, I like to squeeze a little, just because even for me, the glue sometimes gets stuck. So what I like to do <laughs> is I like to squeeze a little bit of glue out in a palette, and then I like to use a popsicle stick so that I can just dip it, and then I can easily, easily place it down. I'm liking this, this combination. So often I will put the glue on the back of the shape and then I'll stick it down. I might paint like a watercolor skin tone on mine later. And if I do that, then I'm gonna definitely show you how that looks. But right now, I'm making sure to cover the back of the shape with glue so that I can then dip and I can start to stick and attach these little pieces down with you. Does anybody like to draw portraits or to draw pictures of people in their family maybe? Or has anybody ever done a self portrait, which is a portrait of yourself? Another way that I want you to notice to make a nose, and remember, we talked about in the past noses being like kind of these long shapes that kind of move down the face. So another way to make a nose would be to use a really long line for the nose. She can make this really big. Okay, much better artist. Now you can really see me. So um, another way to make a nose would be to make a really, really long line that kind of slides down the face. I'm not sure which nose I like better. I think that was kind of cool. And I think I'm gonna go with this one because it fits better for this face. Remember, you can break things. So I can snap this stick to kind of make the nose how long I want it to be. And then I'm gonna glue, 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 glue all the way down the face. The next thing, continue to maybe shape the nose. I think I need a curved line, so I might try to find something that curves. 
这个这个人。Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like that. Something that curves a little bit for the nose. Cool. So this is almost like showing an, a face that's turned in three quarters view. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. The next thing I'm going to do is put on the mouth. So I hope that you're working along with me and I hope that you'll show me or share with me some of the things that you're creating. Awesome, I'm happy with that mouth. Okay, now I've got to get the eyebrows on. So it does take a little time and concentration. And I like this board because it's nice and sturdy. Um, nice and sturdy for the work, right? Now I can remember all of the walks that I've been taking in the morning with my family. I have like this little memory from in my artwork. So I've always wanted to make one of these. Always, always, always. Hmm. I'm gonna do something like that. I might save one of these. Yeah, I forgot there's no face. I think mine is gonna, my, my person, my face is gonna have long hair. So I'm gonna show you some a famous artist, a Renaissance artist named Archibaldo. He used to create faces but using fruits. And if you like his fruit faces, then I might create another video for you where we make faces out of fruits and we draw the fruits and the vegetables to make a face. I think that would be really fun. Okay, let's set it aside for now. Okay, so if you have anything really wonderful I recommend or the flower like this, maybe you press it flat before you use it in case you do want to preserve this, which means save it. Um, you can have a flattened flower that will be easier to preserve using Mod Podge. So if you want to put any beautiful flowers into the work, then I suggest you flatten them with a book first. We'll save that one for later. This is a good example of a flattened flower. <clears throat> oh, that too. Is I want to do the neck. So again, I'm going to use some really delicate straight lines. Maybe just the chin for this one, because the neck is almost going off the page. I almost need a really nice curve. There we go. Let's use that. All right. Okay, artist, so when you're done putting together your work, you want to let it dry. Um, if you decide that you want to keep it, I recommend coating it with a collage material called Maj Podge. And you can buy that online. It's a translucent, a see-through glue, which will preserve some of the colors from your foliage. Um, I've successfully preserved some collages in the past using that. The other thing, that I wanted to ask you is what kind of shapes did you use in your portrait? If you're naming organic shapes that come from nature, like bumpy ovals and uh, kind of bumpy circles, then that's absolutely right. You might have even said some long organic shapes or wavy lines. So thank you guys so much for creating your foliage portraits with me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back with a video on fruit faces very soon and we'll learn to draw all different kinds of fruits for that project. Artists, remember, 
you have the power to imagine and the freedom to create.